dieser Geruch war noch von, von It was extremely hot and it smelled like welding and metal. It was an atmosphere like in hell. Loud, dirty, hot. If only I'd seen this one day before I took the job in the coal mines, I would have known I cannot do this. Brown coal, lignite, the lifeline of East Germany under the German Democratic Republic. At the height of the Cold War, the GDR aimed to secure a self-sufficient energy supply and consequently dubbed the lignite industry as the crown of the GDR economy. By 1989, 21 active open pit mines surrounded Leipzig, Germany. They pumped out 105.7 million tons of coal a year. My name is Gudrun Judel. I worked as an environmental agent for the GDR lignite power plant Lippendorf. The GDR has nothing else but coal, so the people who worked in the coal business were paid pretty well compared to the other professions. The coal company set up festivals for them. They gave them schnapps. At the peak of the lignite era, the coal companies employed around 60,000 workers. With high production and a steady pay, life was good. My name is Mr. Lotze. In 1947, I started working for the brown coal plant. I've worked as a coal miner for 50 years, and after working there for 50 years, I received a medal. It was an employment medal for my 50 year anniversary. The whole coal miner community was a community that really stuck together. There was a great solidarity between the coal miners. The most important day for a coal miner was Miners' Day. They organized a festival and there was a big beer tent where the coal miners spent the whole day. There was beer and great food. I always say they made the coal workers drunk, so they would not understand what was going on in this country. What happened to the environment, what happened to the people, that's my opinion. The GDR was self-sufficient, but the cost of extracting lignite was too high. The state could not invest in safer, eco-friendly technologies. International environmental standards were not met. The atmosphere was poisoned. Unfiltered exhaust from power plants released sulfur into the air and rivers every day. As an environmental agent, I had nothing to do. I witnessed many, many crimes against nature by the state of the GDR. Of course, I felt helpless. Work conditions there were very, very hard. Some coal workers did not even reach the age of 60. They had significant problems with breathing and their lung functions. Their children had severe skin problems. The whole environment was polluted. Over the city of Espenhain, there was a huge cloud of pollution. 66 villages have been devastated since 1924 to make space for new lignite mines. And even though the environment was decaying, the East German brown coal industry continued to expand. Of course people had to withstand health burdens and of course it was a health damaging job. It was a very health damaging job. Every day 24 tons of dust was distributed over the community. People have to deal with that. They got up in the morning and had to clean their window boards with brushes. They put up with that because they also had advantages from the coal. They had employment at the front door. It was in the summer and autumn of 1989. We were concerned about the environmental issues, the lignite in the south part of Leipzig. We collected 16,000 signatures for the closure of Espenhain, but when Espenhain did close, we never thought that there would be 30,000 unemployed people in two years. Two 
25. On the 22nd of March, 92, I believe, the coal company closed. The people of the village went out to the company and the church bells were ringing, and some coal miners and retired people had tears in their eyes. It was a company that was founded in 1910, and they had produced up till 1992, and it was gone now. 1989. East Germany's economy is suddenly introduced to a global energy market. The value of lignite is diminished and environmental standards are finally enforced. Without the GDR, the former state-operated mines had to be privatized or shut down. By 2010, only one active brown coal mine remains in Leipzig. My name is Ute Teile. I started to work here in 1966 and had to learn how to control the plant out of a control unit like this. In 1969, after 30 years, it was my task to shut down the last boiler on the 13th of June at 9.28 am. In the end, it was the sulfur contents of the lignite that caused our end, because 2.5% of the raw lignite consists of sulfur and we could no longer adhere to this limiting environmental standard. This was the end of the power plant. For me in the year 1996 there was a definite uncertainty. What is to come of this? What is to come of this? My name is Robert Sujan. My current job is a cameraman and an editor. I play the guitar and drums. After three years of working in the mine, I had a girlfriend and always when I came home I said, what a shit job. It was an atmosphere like in hell. And she always responded, then quit. So I went to the chief of the open cast mining and said, I'm quitting tomorrow. And he said, quitting, that doesn't exist. Where are you? That's not possible in a GDR. You can't just quit. So I said, I told you, I quit. If I don't come tomorrow, don't be surprised. So I didn't come. Gerhard Gundermann also worked in the coal mine. He was a dicker operator. He looked like this. He was like a crazy bird. But he talked about the environment, pollution, cities that were only built for coal mining, cities without a spirit. The songs that I like to hear are mostly about the reunification, about this time of transition. There's a song in which he talks how hard work was in the mines and that they always dreamt of white sands and palm trees. And in the last verse he sings, We are laying at the white beach and dream of the land of iron. It was hard back then, but in a way you still miss it. With these lyrics he hit the nerve of all these older coal miners. Rüstück wie immer was written by Gunderman in 1997. Shortly after, the craters left by the abandoned mines were systematically flooded, and in 2010, the white beaches became reality. In 20 years, the lignite region of southern Leipzig had transformed from an exploited industrial region to a vibrant lake landscape, New Zealand. My name is Bernhard Klose. I've been the mayor of Markleberg since 1994. I was raised in the area around here. So I know what it was like before the age of lignite, I know what it was like during the age of lignite and thank God I know the time after it. Markleberg had the opportunity to be the first city to act on recultivation of this devastated landscape. 
As a result, we now have two lakes here, other cities may have one. We have around 250,000 visitors per year. 20,000 of these came to raft the artificial rapids at Kanu Park. The Kanu Park is also an international sports park. It was an extraordinary experience for me when the water flowed for the first time at Kanu Park. With new water came new businesses. Belantis, a local amusement park. The pier at Lake Kasputin. And even a buffalo ranch. Former coal workers have prepared the way for this transformation. Bergbau Technique Park stands as a lasting testament to lignite mining in New Zealand. Gerald Riedel is a man of coal. His home was destroyed in the pursuit of lignite, and yet he has worked for the mines for over 20 years. It's a dark history, but one he wishes to preserve. It's a When I stand before the Bergbau Technique Park today, I see it as a memorial, as a documentation, as a connection to the region's history. Here, look what we did in the past. This is how we got from the past to today. And this is the story that guides our future.